Well, good evening and welcome once again to Mars Hill Baptist Church here in Hillsboro, North Carolina. My name is Daniel Gregory, I'm pastor here, and I'm so glad that you have tuned in to uh, have this Bible study again with us. Um, we're on part three of uh, Mark chapter four, verses one through 20. Uh, we've gone through this passage in a message entitled Ears that hear. As Jesus said at the beginning of this passage, uh, that we need, you know, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And the idea is to be attentive and to know what exactly is being said, to receive the word of God and to learn from it. We've been looking through the parable of the sower or the parable of the soils, depending on how you look at it. And tonight we're, we're ending our uh, time in this passage as we look at verses 13 through 20. So I'll encourage you to have your Bibles out. Mark chapter 4, we're going to begin in verse 13. I'm going to read into verse 20. And he, being Jesus, said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word, and these are the ones along the path, where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word, that is sown in them. These are the ones sown on rocky ground, the ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown among thorns. They are ones who hear the word, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. But those that were sown on the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. May God bless the reading of his word. We've looked so far about um, this, this parable of the sower and the seeds. We've seen two points so far. First is this, when we proclaim the gospel, the seeds of the word of God are sown into others' hearts. We saw that within the parable, how the sower went. And as the seeds went on the different ground, sometimes it was very fruitful. Other times it didn't sprout at all, but then other times it might sprout, but then those sprouts would go away. Jesus first gave the parable, and then he gave a, a, a little kind of an interlude. And we saw this in verses 10 through 12, and the point was that the benefit of the gospel comes only when we listen and receive it. Jesus was talking to his disciples, the ones that went a little extra mile, they stuck around. They were the ones going to Jesus saying, Jesus, listen, we heard it, we receive it, we know it, but we need to understand it. We want to go that extra mile. So the benefit comes with those listen and receive it. And finally, we see this as Jesus gives the interpretation of this parable. As we see in verses 13, and, uh, 13 through 20, we see this point. How receptive a person is to the seed of the gospel determines its fruitfulness. How receptive a person is to the seed of the gospel determines its fruitfulness. Jesus at the very beginning here in verse 13 explains the parable of the soils, but he begins by asking two kind of rhetorical questions. And what he is saying here is, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all parables? The words note the essential foundation that this is absolutely crucial for anyone understanding anything else when it comes to the parables and the teachings of Jesus. What he's saying here is, listen, you need to make sure you know this because this is going to set the stage for everything else. So he's telling about the words being so essential. Um, we think about this. It was a fundamental truth of understanding what's going on. We think about the fact um, and the idea of math. 
There's a lot of advanced maths that are out there. Calculus, trigonometry. Um, we think about um, these things that, that physicists do that uh, so many other people uh, use in engineering and all. And they're very advanced, but if you break them down, they go to the very basics. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, those are, are the key building blocks for everything else. Jesus is saying, listen, when we're talking about the idea of the gospel going out to the hearts and lives of others, you need to understand that because that is one of the most fundamental and basic things within the Christian life, within the church, within the kingdom of God. So he's saying, listen, you've got to grab hold of this because it is so important. And as he gives this, he goes in and he explains it. He says, listen, the seeds, they went on a bunch of different soils. Let me break down what I mean by all of that. He says first that the soil of some hearts is hard. The soil of some, heart, of some hearts is hard. And the idea of the, the sower being Jesus, he's, he's casting these seeds out. He says very uh, up front, he says, listen, the seed is the word of God. It's the message of God. It's the gospel. It is what God is trying to communicate to the hearts and lives of others. And he said some of that seed fell along the path. And we have the idea and the vision of a path. You can think in Jesus' day, a, a, a rocky or a, a, a dirt path was something that people walked on, that carts went by, that uh, if a military uh, troop was coming through, they would use this path. And you could understand it as being trampled on day in and day out. That ground was really compact. And you know, because it was really compact, things wouldn't grow on it. So when the seed fell on it, nothing really happened. Birds came in and they would grab the seed and say, hey, I've got a little bit of a, a snack here. But it didn't have any root. It had no chance to go and to, um, to take root and, and to grow. Jesus was saying, listen, these are those with hard hearts. They might hear the word of God. They might hear the message of the gospel. They might come on an Easter Sunday morning. They might come on a Christmas service or a Mother's Day or a Father's Day or a special occasion when a, when a child or a grandchild is going to be in one of, the, uh, one of the musicals and pageants or something like that at church. And they might hear what the minister says. They might hear the message that's there, but it doesn't take root. It's just words. It's just background noise. They might understand it, but it never takes root in their heart. Why? Because there's just a, a pushing away of anything that is spiritual. Jesus says that a lot of times when we cast out the Word of God, when we proclaim it, when we sow those seeds, when we invite that person to the church, give a gospel tract, or they might even hear something uh, on the news or on television or something to that uh, effect, they'll hear it. But it makes no impact in their life. It's like uh, somebody with dirty hands and you handed them a bar of soap and they look at the bar of soap and they're like, yeah, yeah, and then just tosses it aside. It never is used to do what it is supposed to, to help and cleanse someone's soul. So Jesus says there are those that, that put this barrier up, this idea of rejection that occurs, that, that there are people that treat the Word of God like a telemarketer. Ring, ring, oh, I know what this is, it just hangs up the phone. But he also says this, that some soils aren't hard, but rather some hearts are shallow. They're shallow. We see this in verses 16 and 17, that some that are along the path they're on the rocky type of soil. The seed will get in and boom, it just sprouts right on up. They hear the word. They receive it with joy. This is great, but there's no roots. They endure just for a little while, but tribulation or persecution or uh, a cost is involved. And then they say, no, no, I don't want any part of it. 
They're here today and quickly gone for tomorrow. And as a minister, I can tell you this. You can ask any preacher. We see this within the church so often. You get a family that has come and they visited and they hear and they get all excited. They want to do a lot. And you see them for a week or two or three. And it might be a salvation is in the family. And it's like, yay, praise Jesus. And three or four or five weeks pass and they're there every single Sunday. Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, any other time. Yeah, we're here. And then all of a sudden there's a cost that's involved. There's something that, there's a pushback, there's a little tribulation. Oh, you're a follower of Christ. Oh, you're listening to that Bible. And that pushback occurs, and they're like, wait a minute, hold on here. I didn't sign up for this. There's no root, there's no tremendous um, commitment that's there. And what do they do? They walk away. They go and they go, wait a minute here, no, I, I'm going to go follow after this, this sin. I'm going to go follow after my own way. I'm going to go follow after something else. By the way, a good question for our own hearts is how deep do our roots run? Is it to the heart of Jesus saying there's nothing that's going to sway me from it? Or is it, are we just one little thing away? Oh, I, I can't do this. i got to go somewhere else. Jesus said there's hard soil, there's shallow soil, but notice also this, the soil of some hearts is distracted. It's distracted. Verses 18 and 19, and others are the ones sown among thorns. Those are those that hear the word, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. These are the ones that hear and receive the word better than the hard soil or the soil that is shallow. They, they hear it and it's there. But there are things that choke it out. The desire of wealth, the lust for other things, the cares of this world as it is put. There is a faith that has added Jesus in but has not put Jesus on the throne. It's the idea of, yes, you know what? What a wonderful message. Forgiveness of sin, placement in the family of God, being able to have that joy and that peace that passes all understanding. And they try to bring it into their life, but they're like, okay, Jesus, look, you've got to share the throne with all this other stuff. All this thing, I'm, I'm trying to build my wealth here. I'm trying, to, uh, and I'm trying to master this sin over here. Hey, I'm trying to do all of these things in the world. And Jesus is like, wait a minute, hold on here. I'm coming in to make everything different. And I'm the only one on the throne. And that's the idea that people will come in and go, wait a minute here, Jesus. You're, you're cramping my style. I'm not committed to this. I like you being here, but no, i, I got to have all this other stuff. And what happens? All that other stuff takes priority in someone's life. And they run after that pleasure, that wealth, those things that are in the world. And that's the idea that there is no abiding faith. And that abiding faith isn't able to take root. To be able to, to bring up good and wonderful things within the Christian life. And so they pass as well. And you know what? That's the world we live in right now. There is not a point in time we will not have a struggle with the things that are trying to buy for our time and our attention and our affections. There's a hundred billion things that are out there. Whether it be um, sinful things that are trying to tempt us to get away from God, or things in this world that are genuinely good, things that, that can be profitable in our life. We think about our jobs. We need our jobs. God could have called us to our jobs, but you know what? Sometimes the profession or the career that we have can try to take over and go, hey, you know what? Get away from God. Get more into the business. Oh, we can have things that bring us joy in our life. We think about the sports or the entertainments that we have or the hobbies that we have in our life. And there's nothing wrong with those things. 
But you know what? They can try to take over our life and choke out the faith that we have. So we should always also be on the lookout for those things that are trying to, to take over. See, the soil of some hearts is distracted, but notice also this. And, and Before I get to the fourth one, let me talk about those first three. Those first three are brought for our understanding, our warning and our understanding. Because when we go out into this world and we invite someone to church or we share the gospel with someone or we try to share a scripture or we try to minister to somebody and we're giving forth Jesus into that situation, we're, we're speaking words of truth, we're trying to reach out in Christ's love, there are going to be those that there's not going to be anything that happens with it. Those that are, there are going to be those that completely reject it. There's going to be those that hear it really good, but they fall away real quick. And then there's going to be those that go, hey, I, I really, really, really appreciate it, and I love Jesus, but I've got all this other stuff, and all that other stuff is really what they run after. It's for our understanding, based on the hearts and lives of others, Based on what, what the Word of God tells us, we can kind of understand why these rejections happen. And you know, it's good too also for us to be able, if we really feel, uh, feel like we need to witness to somebody, sometimes somebody on hard dirt, sometimes they got to be plowed up a little bit. There's got to be a softening of that dirt through the course of time with a friendship, with a relationship, with, with um, time being able to constantly plant the seed of the Word of God. Sometimes we got to help somebody uh, get the weeds out of their life and go, hey, you know what, you are, you're getting overwhelmed by all these other things. Or, hey, you know what, that thing's trying to take over your faith, take over your relationship with, with Jesus. They can give us insights on being able to help someone, but we can understand, okay, yeah, Jesus said it was going to be this way. The Word of God goes out, but sometimes it doesn't take root within the heart of other people. We don't see salvations. We don't see this, um, this last soil, this, this uh, heart that is fruitful, which is the last soil. The soil of some hearts is fruitful. Verse 20 talks about a heart that hears the Word, that accepts the Word. It's the picture of someone that hears what God is saying, that hears what the Word of God says to them. The idea that they are lost in their sins, that Jesus Christ came to save their souls, and that we would, if we would receive Him by faith, believe that He died on the cross for our sins, that He died, was buried three days, and rose again, that we would be saved, just as the Scripture says in Romans 10. If we, uh, if we have someone that is like that, the Scripture says they are going to have that faith that is rooted deep and that they're going to have a life that is fruitful. And it could be a, a fruitfulness that is most vividly seen in, in other souls that are one to Christ. It could be a soul that sees great joy and great peace that comes from God and from that understanding that it is um, and that is a, a mature soul in Christ. It could be the maturity of a life that goes out and ministers either overseas or across the street that touches other hearts and lives uh, by praying with someone, by giving encouragement. It, there's a lot of different ways there is fruitfulness that comes about. But the reality of what is said here is that soil that is fruitful, is one that hears, that accepts, that brings the Word of God into their life, that good things happen, that God gets control, that there is a full and absolute surrender of their life to Christ. It's a picture that says this, I've heard Jesus I've received Jesus, and Jesus is the absolute treasure in my life. There is nothing that is worth more than Jesus in my life right now. That's the idea of someone who's going to have a faith. 
that says, I'm going to be in the Word. I'm going to be in prayer. I'm going to be about worshiping my Lord and Savior. They're going to be doing all of those things and it's going to increase their faith. Let, let me close with just a few applications, a few things for us to consider. Christianity is a religion of the Word and therefore of the ear. So the question we have to ask is, do we have ears that hear? We remember that at the very beginning of this passage. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The invitation was Jesus is going to be saying some important words. He was going to be saying information that was vitally important to our very souls. The question is, do we have hearts that will receive it? That we wouldn't just toss it away going, oh, that's worthless. We wouldn't hang up the phone, as it were, but we would say, okay, I know I might not at first like what is said. It might be something that is kind of hurtful because it's exposing sin in my life. But you know what? I know it's something I need to hear. Just like a bad tasting medicine that the doctor might give me, it is something that I absolutely need for the survival of my soul, for the benefit of my life. Christianity is a religion of the word, therefore of the ear. The question we have to ask is, do we have ears that hear? How are you when it comes to receiving the word of God, the message of God? When you hear preachers, when you hear, um, uh, hear sermons uh, on Sunday morning, when you read uh, the word of God, when you are in Sunday school, are you receiving it? Is it taking root? And is it making a difference in your life? Number two is this. Hearing God's word is dangerous. What you do with it is critical to your soul. Think about that just for a moment. Hearing God's word is dangerous. What you do with it is critical to your soul. Let me put it to you in a different way. Let's say I know beyond a shadow of a doubt the next winning lottery numbers. Um, I think I was uh, on the road the other day and I think I saw it was up to 241 millions. A definite life-changing amount of money. Well, let me say, um, let me give you a scenario in which I tell you, okay, these are absolutely the next winning lottery numbers. You can write them down, you can go take them, you can go play those numbers, and you will win. You can hear it. You can write it down. But you know, in hearing it, that's a dangerous thing. Because you have information in front of you that absolutely will change your life regardless of your actions. If you don't do anything with it, in a few days' time, whenever they uh, give the numbers, you're going to look down and go, you know what, I had the winning numbers and I didn't do anything with it. That radically changed your life. You had the absolute opportunity of a lifetime and you missed it. Why? Because you didn't take the word seriously. On the other respect is if you take it and you go, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna step out in faith. I'm going to go in and I'm going to pay the few dollars for a, a lottery ticket and I am going to play those numbers, and lo and behold, what happens? You win the lottery, and you have a huge, huge boatload of money coming your way. Both directions of that make it so that your life has changed. The Word of God is exactly the same. When we receive it, when we follow it, when we obey it, when we take it in, and we say, Lord, teach me, from this, let it change my life. Our life can be amazingly changed. But you know what? When we reject it, the same thing is true. You figure the, the consequences of rejecting the gospel of Jesus Christ, it has eternal consequences. Receiving it has eternal consequences. But it will change our life either way. So the question is, how are you receiving the Word of God? What are you doing with the Word that is brought to you? Finally this, constantly do a checkup on your heart. 
for how you treat the words of God and what is spoken to you in Scripture. Friends, I think that is a great point for us to end on because that's all of what Jesus is getting at. He's explaining why people will, might reject the gospel. Why some do, why some don't, why some people have the reactions that they do with maybe being overjoyed and then you never see them again. But it demands of our own lives to check our own hearts. To say, Jesus, am I pushing you out? Are the cares of this world, are, 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 are the lust of my flesh, is the, the pursuit I have for wealth, is the pursuit I have for popularity, is it pushing you out and choking out the truth that you have put in my life? Do I, am I somebody that's heart of heart that I say, you know what, I don't want to hear anything of the Bible. Is it one that, am I one that uh, is kind of having no root? You know, I get it a little bit, but it doesn't mean anything to me. Or is my heart one that truly accepts and lets the Word of God take root in my life? Because it is through that that God Himself says, you know what, great blessings and great fruitfulness will come your way. Friends, I'll encourage you, even as you pray tonight, just to ask the Lord to do that checkup. Say, Lord, help me. Help me to have a heart that receives your word quickly and readily. Let it take root in my life that I might see your hand at work. Bow with me in a word of prayer as we close today. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for this beautiful passage in which we're able to gain such knowledge and learning. And Lord, I pray now that you would help us each to seek you, that you might look into our hearts to see what kind of soil is there. Lord, I pray for anyone here that might have a rock or two that has come their way that, that might be uh, affecting the way they have a, they've received your word and, and have a relationship with you. Lord, help, help them to, to weed those out, to get those out that the soil of their life might be good and pure and clean. Father, I pray that you would help us each time we hear your word to have ears that hear that it might affect our lives for the better. Lord, we lift these things now into your hands. We pray your will would be done. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Just a few announcements. Next week, we're having a little bit of a different service. We're having our Maundy Thursday service. Um, we're going in and uh, we're remembering the day, uh, the time in which Christ gave the new mandate. That's where Maundy Thursday comes from, the Latin mandatum, that he gave a new commandment to love one another. So we're having a very special service here in the sanctuary, 7 o'clock, this coming Thursday, not tomorrow Thursday, but a week, uh, week from tomorrow, right before Easter. Uh, and we'll be doing a live stream of that, so everyone will be able to be a part of that. Um, also, this coming Sunday, before I, I skip ahead, this coming Sunday is Palm Sunday. We'll be enjoying a, a wonderful service, and right afterwards, we're going to be having a covered dish meal in our fellowship hall. All are invited to come. If you want to bring a dish, you can, but I know we'll have enough food. Then right after that, for our children, we'll be having an Easter egg hunt. If you'd like to bring uh, Easter eggs that are already uh, filled with candy, that would be wonderful. We certainly would appreciate that. And then Easter Sunday morning, we're having our sunrise service right outside the church at 6.30. And then our regular morning service will be at 11 o'clock. Uh, and that will uh, be uh, our, our choir who is singing our Easter cantata. So we hope we, uh, you'll be able to make that. But then right after that, after Easter Sunday, Wednesday nights are going to be different. We're not going to be uh, having them pre-recorded, but we're going to be meeting again in our fellowship hall. We'll have a meal at 6 o'clock and our Bible study at 7. So uh, this, this live stream will be a lot different. Uh, it'll be a, uh, different in respect of where it is and how it's done. We'll have some more interaction and such. So we've got a lot of changes coming, but we're praising the Lord for them as we get back to a little bit of normal. So I do hope you'll be able to make it here for Sunday morning or one of our special services uh, as we're so excited that those will be happening. Until then, church, I love you, I miss you, and uh, I hope you have a blessed rest of the week. Good night.